to our audience. <laughs> Stan and the rest of council. With that, we'll have a roll call by uh, Finley. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Absent. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Chammy. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. Six members present. With that, we'll have the invocation of Chief Trusty. Father, well, Lord, we thank you for the wonderful, beautiful day and the weather that you've blessed us with, Lord. Please be in this meeting tonight. Let thy perfect will and only your will be done. Bless our troops, their families, our first responders. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And with that, we need uh, <coughs> action on the minutes of 610. So moved. Second. Uh, Eagleson, Jamie. Any corrections or additions? Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? <clears throat> yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Those are accepted. Six that I now need a motion <clears throat> for the regular meeting of 617. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, oh, Mr. Shammy Bond? Is yes. that? I'm here. Oh, hello. <laughs> My apologies. No problem. My petting. We're on the uh, meetings of 617 roll call. Okay. You're good. You're, this one's fine. Oh, tonight. We have a first from Shammy and a second from Vaughn. For the minutes for seven. For the minutes for June seventeenth. <clears throat> yep. Is it okay to call it? Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Those minutes accepted seven zero. <clears throat> And then I need a motion for the 6-22-24 strategy session that we had. So moved. Second. With that, any comment? Is it good? Ms. Burns. Councilman Shammy. Staying. State your reason, please. Reason? Yes. Uh, out of town. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 601. Okay. Does anybody have any communications? I guess not. I guess we'll go to the uh, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor Cook, uh, members of council, members of the public, and staff, of course. Uh, city manager report for July 1. Um, the planning and zoning mayor and mayor's report report is attached. Uh, for the record, I'll read the uh, stats for the planning department. Uh, 88 total violations. I'm sorry, 69 total violations for this reporting month. Um, 42 total properties violated. That averages out to 1.64 violations per property. We had one abatement complete, 43 uh, closed violations, uh, two vacant properties violated, uh, two work orders issued, uh, four violations uh, submitted to mayor's court, and three property extensions granted. 
and that is followed with a detailed list of our code enforcement activity and our mayor's court report. Uh, should council have any questions on that report, I'll be happy to entertain. If not, I can move on with the rest of the city manager report. Thank you. Um, survey to citizens. So me and Brian, who's our planning director, Brian Moore, we had got together uh, earlier in the last week and decided, hey, let's start gauging our citizens. A lot of, a lot of cities do this. Um, we want to know what's their opinion on uh, the development. What's your opinion on where you want us to go next? It's really getting your citizens engaged of where they think the city's going. Um, we're going to develop a few. I would invite council to maybe think about that. At the second meeting in July here, I'll bring some examples. If council wants to add any of that, please let us know. We'd be happy to entertain. But again, we just want to start reaching out to that citizen base now that we have the staff to do so and engaging their opinion. Um, we're really excited to see what their uh, results are. We also will probably extend that to your business owners as well and also get their feedback on you know, where they think the city should go, et cetera, et cetera. That's a, very large component of our, uh, our population base that we want to get their opinion on as well. But again, still in the very early stages of development, those sur surveys are. But again, we'll bring a few examples to the July 15th meeting. And again, council, if you want, would like us to uh, focus in on an area topic, just let us know. We'll be happy to develop some surveys around that as well. City Council strategy uh, session and retreat. There's another section for council to talk about it. I just want to thank everyone who took part of that. I think it was a good event. I think um, I'm excited to see what the final report would be, but I think we needed to do that to go to the next hurdle, uh, to get over the next hurdle. Um, and I'm excited again just to see that final report. But it did take a lot of our time on Saturday. So again, thank, to each, of, thank each of you who could attend. Uh, next time, maybe you can come if you're not in town, uh, not out of town. And these are some thank yous. We had our 2024 Community Cleanup and Shred Up event. Um, that was a, uh, the shred side of things was more successful than the cleanup side of things. We may look at changing the date of that cleanup for next year. Uh, we'll keep council abreast of that uh, decision making process as well. Um, and then to a big thank you for the community garage sale fireworks show and movie night. So the people who helped out with that again, big success and we definitely thank you for your time on that as well. Our 2023 state audit just started last week. I'm excited to see the end result of that as well. These things typically do take two to three months, depending on if there's extensions or not added. Um, as soon as that result is in, the final report is done, the state will uh, reach out to you guys uh, like they have done in the past, um, and then we'll share that audit with you guys as well. 2025 to 2029 CIP work session. So that is coming up on us pretty quickly. I thought I heard that council was entertaining maybe doing a work session the Third Mondays, sec third Monday to each, second Mondays of each month, second. Um, so with that being said, um, if we could have a motion to, if council plans on having that work section for the 22nd, maybe we can throw that CIP discussion in on that evening. Mm -hmm. You having the work sessions the second or the fourth Monday? I thought it was the fourth Monday. Fourth Mondays? No, the second, second. Monday. Second. <laughs> that was what we talked about at the uh, session on Saturday. Okay. I'm, I thought I heard you say the 22nd when we were at lunch. So I do apologize. So are you guys looking at the work session on the 8th? That's, that was my intention. Um, is everybody clear on the 8th? We won't be able to have the CIP done before then. But there's other things we could probably discuss. Should you want to have the work session? All right, just do the 22nd. That way the just CIP not. will be done, hopefully. <clears throat> yeah. I know I won't be available on the 22nd, but you guys are more than welcome to talk about the CIP. Do you want to just maybe talk about, well, it's going to be a long... I was going to say maybe doing the first meeting in August, but that would be a very long meeting. What's council thought? Do we want to switch from the second to the fourth? You can just do it for this month, sir, if you don't mind. That way we can at least get the CIP covered because we have to do that three months prior submission of the budget. So it kind of, it's all scheduled out as far as dates and submissions. It makes sense to me. Go ahead, Ken. It makes sense to me to go ahead and move it to 
22nd, except for Ben not being there. Mr. Bond, do you want to come in and sit with me and Ms. Harris and Mr. Kiko when you get back, just go over it? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Kathy, can we make that in the form of a motion? Yeah, I mentioned that we um, have our work session on the 22nd of this month in order to discuss the CIP work session. The CIP. <laughs> Second. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yeah. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? The question is, it'll be at 6 o'clock. That would be my thought. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes, I'd love for you guys to come and have a work session. <laughs> <laughs> and Councilman Shannon. By all means. Yes. <laughs> By all means. That is accepted 7-0. Mr. Bond, I'll, I'll get a hold of you for your availability after. Yeah, before or after. Sure. I'll just FaceTime him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let me continue on. Are we, oh, are you, are, you, are you good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will move on with the report then. Sorry about that. Uh, reserves at Honey Creek, that is our development coming off of uh, 235 there. Uh, they are making some leeway relatively quickly. I think they have both retention ponds uh, pretty much dug out. Still got a long way to go. Um, however, I just wanted to update council. So we did that first round of TIF legislation for, with them, I would say probably last year at some point in time. And we have been waiting um, for them to get back with us. Well, they did. So we're going to start having, uh, it, it's, it's basically it's a, a, a call between the TIF team, and that's myself, um, Jake Jeffries, our city attorney, and then Mr. Greg Daniels out of Columbus. He's the attorney we hired uh, to help us out with the TIF legislation. Um, and then, of course, the Horton team that they're bringing as well. And basically it's going to be a set call every two weeks at 10 a.m. on Fridays, and just a way for us to keep us abreast. So they are going to be using a bonding structure. So there'll be another round of legislation coming to council. I do not know when that's going to be yet. Our first meeting is July 12th with that particular uh, TIF group. Um, this is the second step in the process. We're excited to move on with that. Um, but we're gonna start hitting the ground running here soon. I wish I had a, a tentative outline of the dates I could give you guys for that TIF legislation. If that's something I can get on July 12th, I'll definitely let you know. Because I wanna be clear on this because we're gonna have basically the DR Horton TIFs going on. We've already had one of theirs. We'll have a second one. But also we have not even started the TIF proceedings for Monroe Meadows yet. So we wanna make it a clear path and clear line that we're not getting the two confused. So uh, this administration will make it very easy for you guys to follow that. Um, but we are, again, excited that we're having leeway on that TIF legislation. Um, policy updates council is working on. So the boards and commission handbook is about done. Uh, I suggest maybe on the 22nd, if we have time, we can look at that too, or you guys can do that at a different meeting. It's primarily done. We just need to know um, the particular maybe count, uh, committees you guys want to form, and that way we can start working from there. The book itself, I think, is primarily done. I'm going to look at it again. It's been a couple weeks since I kind of did my last review of it. But I, like I said, I think it's there. Um, definitely don't want to leave that hanging because it's so close to being done. So um, I'll let you guys discuss if you want to do that on July 22nd. We can also do it sometime in August too. Completely up to you guys. Let's put it on for the 22nd. I think uh, the CIP should not take that long, but I think we can discuss that. Sure. We also would like to take it, we don't want to rush the CIP this year or the budget. I think part of our mission here is to slow things down. We're used to having a fast paced council, but I think we need to slow it down a little bit. So I don't want to rush through that CIP. Should council have some questions on that? So just keep that in mind if we do go over a little bit, that boards and commission can be at a <coughs> later date. Yeah. <coughs> Is that, you guys want to discuss the, the boards and commission at the 22nd meeting or? We can, we can do that. Is anybody opposed to that? We can put it on if we run out of time. We can always reschedule. Okay. Do that, should do a motion. The, uh, the on the com yeah, boards and com committees, I thought we already decided on the committees that was in the book. I don't. There was a pretty good sized list of those bill, and I think we needed. No, I thought we narrowed it down to like four or five. That uh, to, the, to the best of my knowledge, I don't Whatever. think we did. Um, it's fine. Now, 
Somebody tell you, you guys had said to keep the committees that were currently yeah. being active, like in the city. And then um, I think Mrs. Wright said this was where Mr. Bridge wanted you guys to pick a committee to like be like each one of you kind of be a representative on it. And then we ran out of time. So that's where we got. So. And, and if I may. I, if I remember correctly on, on that conversation too, Mrs. Berner, that the, uh, I forget who said it, I think somebody said it, that the, uh, the boards and committees, boards we already have is all we really need for our city right now. And in the future, if we need more boards, we can activate or get I'm looking up the minutes. In. I think it was Mr. Bond. The, uh, that we have a hard time filling committees now. I mean, how long did it take? It took over a year to get Board of Appeals or uh, Board of Zoning uh, filled. <laughs> so, just. That. Why don't we leave that on there for the 22nd and let Mrs. Burner go back and look over those minutes and give us a. Yeah, it was the special meeting in May, right? I can't think of the date. It, uh, why don't you just make a motion and then I'll add it to the, I, so that way I can add it to the legal ad and that way it's covered. If you guys have time to talk about it, then you have, so would somebody. Motion to add that to the agenda right. for. Move to add the board and commission handbook to the 22nd meeting. Second. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Except at 7 0. They good? Yes. Uh, the other item under the policy items were the charter review preamble through Article 4. Um, I shouldn't say attached. I forgot to take it off from the last meeting. I do apologize. Um, I do believe uh, we sent that out to council for your final review, and Jake would need to know if that's a true representation of what you guys had at the work session so he can start drafting the uh, ballot language, I mean, the ordinance and stuff like that, which will lead to the ballot language. If I'm not mistaken, I think we already agreed to it. Yeah, so I sent it back out. Because I said just make sure these are what Jake is interpreting is correct. And I asked you guys to look at that email I sent from Jake so you guys could, they could tell me that. So I can go back to Jake and be like, yes, this is what, this is what they meant by Jake's interpretation. Because we're on a deadline to get the ordinance and stuff set up to council. So. Any comment on I'm that? I'm okay with it. You're okay with it? So what Jake put and wrote is how you guys interpreted it, and if Jake writes how he wrote on the memo, you guys are going to be okay with it. Okay. You want a motion to that effect? No, no, we're good. I'll, I'll, see, I'll see if we can draft the legislation a little early. That way you guys can take a look at it and uh, make sure it's all good to go before we send it up to the Board of Elections. Right. I think we got some time. Um, to, for that to happen so I can see if Jake and like I said just maybe draft a little earlier that way you guys can take a look at it and maybe in, it'd be a little bit better on ballot language form or something like that whatever Jake would need to do to make that official for the Board of Elections okay um, an upcoming legislation um, still with the Monroe Reddos tips uh, the amendments I do have dates on there now so council knows when they're when they are coming we'll have those done uh, for you starting I do believe next meeting on the 15th um, I do not have any additional discussion topics at this point, but I would be happy to entertain any questions. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. When I was leaving the farmer's market Saturday, I sat on the bench there watching the light cycle through. Mm -hmm. That's not what we authorized. What you, you authorize a signal change? One direction at a time. Well, you, we, well traffic engineers make that final decision on that. I'll get with Howie, and they, like I said, they'll do their traffic engineer thing. 
um, but I do know that they're coming back out either they were either coming later today or, or this week to fix some signalization stuff but I don't recall I'll look through the minutes and we'll see what yeah because I made the motion yeah I, re I remember it too mm -hmm. well the, what well, they're only going to do they're what the traffic engineers will probably approve or say so let me get some more information before I make any more comments okay. and then we'll take it from there but usually anytime you change any traffic signals that's really run through the traffic engineers for patterns and stuff like that and they'll kind of set what is generally accepted principles and practices to that okay. mm -hmm. now we do know it's how it's the west the traffic getting backed up by Evans was kind of unexpected so I think that's what they're going to look at but as far as the traffic heading south it's working great um, you get that arrow um, and I've watched it many times I actually got myself into it Friday on purpose when I was came in I went back down church came in I think I ended up right by Connie's floors and I was second car for missing a complete cycle and then I got it on the air the next time around um, lots of great comments that were coming across um, but as far as the specifics like you had mentioned we'll have to look into that for you question mm -hmm. where do we stand with Metro I don't know. Well, can you explain your question a little bit, Porter? We mean, do we have a projected uh, completion date? Where, where are they with what they're doing? Uh, they have Northwoods, I think, left to go. Uh, everyone else, I think, is pretty much uh, have the opportunity to set up. But I don't have an end date for you. I would probably say if they have Northwoods to go, probably another three to four, maybe five months. They can't do it in the winter. Does anyone else have anything for Mr. Bridge? We're getting uh, Metronet installed Monday. What it, mm -hmm. uh, the regional manager is calling around mm -hmm. uh, once they complete, I guess, sections. And they're just calling up the customers and having a, setting a date to install. So that's all I know on that. So. Yeah, they did certain sections. Are you getting complaints on them or something? Or? Uh, I'm, what I'm getting is mm -hmm. the fact they sent out an email to several of the citizens when they went to redo their to do the email mm -hmm. and pick an installation date it stopped when they called the company the company didn't know anything about it said you couldn't find that information out online which I found was a lie because there have been several people I checked back with they have set up an install date online so apparently the right hand don't know what the left hand's doing. Yeah, I've never heard of that. I always heard of compliments on them and people enjoying the setup process. Um, but if I understood your what you just said, people are getting notified that they can set up, but then when they go to sign up, they can't? They're getting an email asking people to go ahead and mm -hmm. call it or sign up. <coughs> sign up for an install date the install date stops right there then when they call the company the company doesn't know what's going on and mm -hmm. they say you can't maybe it's a scam sign thank up. you thank you so i was going to say that maybe it's a scam yeah. maybe they shouldn't reply to it's every email they get the I've, had the email. I've had banks send me stuff that was a scam that had my bank information on it except for the credit card number so it's just because they have the information doesn't make it true. Go ahead. Fire chief has something. Uh, we got ours today that way. It was a text message, gave us a link. My uh, wife clicked on the link, went straight through, set everything up. Within five minutes we were done and got a confirmation back from them. Sir, I would ask to tell the people who's complaining about that email, tell them to go up and look at the from and if it's a weird spelling of Metronet, well, it could be Metronet, but they're so quick on it, they can make that O in Metronet, could be a zero, and the average person would just think it's for Metronet. That just may be a possibility, because I haven't heard anything about emails and people having hard times on that. So, um, yeah, tell them we're sorry they're having those issues, but I haven't heard any complaints on, on at the city building. But we'll definitely look into that for you, sir. I checked online. I can't get service. So, 
And I don't understand that because they should be in that alley behind you. You would think. Mine got installed. Mine yeah, no. mm -hmm. Peggy's been installed for what, two weeks? There was somebody back there working a few months ago. I knew about it because they cut off my phone line. <laughs> <laughs> well, you knew you had a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, we'll find out what's going okay. on. Mr. Graham, is your house coming up as a business still, perhaps? I'll talk to you later about it. Okay. All right. No committee reports that I'm aware of. If not, we'll go comments from members of the public. Go ahead, Janelle. You know the routine. Uh, Janelle Zimmerman, uh, 213 for this drive. Uh, that really upset me that that traffic light did not get set up the way that it was, the way that the motion was made to stop the traffic because they had that figured out how that was going to work. And I just had a feeling that it would get turned around and they would do it the way they had planned originally because they never read it back exactly what the wording was. Hmm. And that really upsets me that they didn't do it the way it was proposed to be done. So I'm just saying, why, why is that? They should be addressing you. I'm addressing you. I'm assuming you're in charge of... Address me, but I have no idea. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, that conversation should probably go to the service director. No, it, should, it could come to me, but she's addressing council. This is your council meeting. So when they're at the podium, they address you guys over here. And I'm, since someone's taking it, Ms. Zimmerman, okay. we'll look into it. I'm not jumping to conclusions, and I'm almost positive how he said that motion will be depending on what a traffic engineer's final decision is going to be. No, uh-uh. Well, again, we'll have to look at <laughs> I was at that. the meeting, and I remember that. Okay. Well, we have documentation of that meeting, and that's okay. why I told them that we'll look into some things. But even if they motioned a certain way, a traffic engineer is only going to do the pattern that's best suited for that intersection. That's why they're traffic engineers. So they follow best practices. They follow best practices of signal, timing, and all that stuff. So um, we'll look into it, but I don't think it's appropriate to be pointing fingers until we have a final say of how it all went down. So let us look into some things. Um, and then we will take it from there. That's okay, the, I just thought the whole idea of that plan was how that was going to work and that they were going to give it a try first. That's what you have there now is that try. What we wanted to do it on this side of the table was actually They aren't take, stopping the traffic. We wanted to remove traffic, some parking spots, but then council right. decided to do the signal change to see how that goes. Right. So that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at the minutes from that signal change, and then if it needs to be corrected, we'll go back to the traffic engineer and get his professional opinion. If he says, no, I didn't do it this way based off this, this, and this, then we need to follow that traffic engineer's advice. They're a traffic engineer. They get paid to do that for a living. So you take the advice of the professionals. But again, I don't think anyone has a complete recollection of exactly what was said at that meeting. So it'll allow us some time to go research it, and then we'll have okay. the information back to council. So well, I just think, do. I don't know the group that put that idea together that made so much sense, that they put in all that time and effort, and it was passed, and yet it didn't happen. It was David Lambert. But maybe I'm mistaken about something. I don't know, because I can easily do that, but. I guess what we've got, we've got an error in communication. I would have assumed that if something was changed over and above what council had said, somebody should have came back to council and said, we're going to try this first, and that way we'd have an answer for Janelle. Again, I think everyone in here is jumping to conclusions until we figure out what exactly happened. So we have to research the minutes until we figure out what's going on. I'm not going to sit there and greet it yes or no until we, I can sit back and research the minutes, find out exactly what was said at that meeting. That's the only way that I can say, you're right, I'm wrong, you're right, I'm wrong, and it's the only way to move forward. I don't think anybody's trying to figure out who's right or who's wrong. I'm thinking that 
Well, it is because if I'm being accused of not doing things that I've been told to do by either side of the fence, I need to perf I need to share the minutes and say, yes, this is what we did. But I know how we well enough to have that catch-all to say, you guys may want it this way, but it's going to be dependent on the traffic engineer and what their professional stance is. You know, what we wanted to do is look at taking the sparking spots out. We were adamantly against just a signal change because we didn't think it was going to work. That's what the administration wanted. Now, I, that's what I remember from that meeting. Now, how we decided how that signal was going to play out, I know we said we wanted to give someone leeway this way, someone leeway that way, but I'm not going to speculate on what was said until I see that in official writing. And if the minutes aren't good enough, I'll go back and watch the actual meeting from that day to see what was exactly said. But again, there's no, I, I can't give you any yes or no answer until I know what was actually said at the original meeting. Janelle, is that satisfactory with you? For yeah. The yeah, it is. I don't I mean I don't know what else we could do, but I just I just found that that odd because that's something that I was afraid would happen. What do you remember from the meeting? I remember from the meeting that they brought it up mm -hmm. and you and Halleck kept saying, Well, we, we need to do it this way because that's what it said. But then it was voted on and they said that everyone voted on it and said they wanted it that way and it I thought it was brought up, they wanted it exactly how that team had planned it. So that, you do not know what was exactly said? Because like I said, we wanted to take this, we wanted to take the part. No, I can't tell you exactly what it said. And, and it concerned me a little because they didn't read it back then. You know, usually they read it back what they're writing down. Well, that, that, that would be me. That, yeah, that, right, that yeah. But I don't think it was read was. back, but I, I won't, I mean, I won't guarantee that, but it seemed to me, well, that never got read back to make sure that that's exactly what it was from that meeting. When was this meeting? Oh, I, I don't remember the date of the meeting at all. Does anybody remember? It's been... Oh, we got it. I got it. I mean, it's I got been... It index very easy. It's computer. been quite a while back. I'll, I'll find it. The point of it is, is like, this was a very hard discussion with the traffic signals. Um, this is a step in the right direction. Let's focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. If the signal needs yeah, to Yeah, I think it is better the way it is now. Yeah. Let's focus on the hurdle that got us here, and that is alleviating some of the traffic. Again, it's all speculation until we watch the video. Okay. But let's focus on the fact that we got them in, they're up, and we got a turn arrow. If we need to tweak it past that, we can definitely tweak it. Okay. Okay. It seemed to me like the turn arrow didn't last very long, but I haven't been down there when it's seconds. busy, so it might be fine. But and that's all based off the number of cars. How many cars? Through, how many people are turning left, turning right? Oh, sometimes it can change. It's 13 seconds if you're heading time. south, that arrow. But then okay. the other one are gauged by if there's some like one or two cars in that air turn lane. It's all reactive to oh, okay. sensors and everything. Yeah, I didn't. That's why I we made a disclaimer. Work, so. You may want it a certain way, but the professionals who are the engineers in this may say, yeah. no, it needs to work on this because we have 10,000 cars come through today. Four of those turn left, five of them turn right, six of them go straight. You know, that's just how they look into that. They don't look at just because some person wanted this person to go turn left and this one to turn right for 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. They don't take that consent. It's more about the data there, which is the traffic count and how that traffic moves. Per yeah. mm -hmm. I think that's why I thought the reasoning was mm -hmm. for the, to stop the traffic on the other side and so they could all keep moving. But I don't know, because I don't really understand it. That's just the way I thought it was. Okay. I mean, why they did it that way. Well. So, I, sorry to sound so grumpy, but I just. No, we'll just look into it. I said I can't old. do anything until I know what was said at the meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Well, For sure. Thank you, Jenny. I think that's all, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think you had something. I was just gonna say, if maybe we could see that next week. Maybe Randy could bring that for us, or bring Howie and explain that for us. I don't um, think I was. I will email. I will email the date and time of the meeting minutes, and you guys can yeah, take a look at it. Yeah, yeah, you said next week. <laughs> oh no, not next week. No, no, the next council meeting. I'm sorry. Does anyone else in the audience have anything? Okay. With that, we'll go to the ordinance. And we have <clears throat> no resolutions. We have ordinance 2024-30 introduced on June 17th, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2025 and submitting the same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. So moved. Second. 
Uh, an explanation of this ordinance. Uh, this is step one of our overall budgetary process. So those in the audience who don't know what a tax budget is, it's really just an early look at what our operating budget is going to be for 25. The numbers are going to change. Uh, we kind of go above and beyond what a true tax budget is. We don't need to do every single line item. It's just basically for your funds that have levies or um, property tax revenue uh, dumped in them. That's why it's called a tax budget, how much money we're going to receive off our taxes and levies. Um, so again, it's the first step in the budget process. This is followed by the CIP that they just um, voted in to have that work session on. And then that leads to our operating budget. So I guess this is step one of three. Any further? Sorry, I have a question. Yeah, I don't know. So for this one, if I seen something that seemed a little out of line, this isn't the place or this isn't the time to, yeah, okay. That's what, that was my only question. The numbers are going to change. We haven't closed out our year that, for twenty four. I was just like, no. "Whoa, wait!" Not all counties in the state of Ohio require tax budget. Unfortunately, Clark County does. So some counties weigh them as important. Some counties don't. The county really already has the information because they're the one who sends it to us. So it's right. kind of like redundancy work. But it's really just there. All those numbers are going to change, except okay. for your taxes. But your fund that. balances yeah. will definitely change. The coming in. Yeah, I figured that. Yep. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If not, Mr. Byrne. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? I'll go with it. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. It's Councilman okay. Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. That passes 7 0. The next three look like they are read only. So I have ordinance 2024-31, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on July 15th, an ordinance authorizing the, the disposal of an unneeded city vehicle. Ordinance 2024-32, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on July 15th, an ordinance providing for the issuance of not to exceed $210,000 general obligation bonds Series 2024 by the City of New Carlisle, Ohio for the purpose of paying the cost of purchasing a new street sweeper and necessary appurtenances thereto. <coughs> a mouthful. Ordinance 2024-33, <coughs> introduction tonight, public hearing and action on July 15th. An ordinance amending a section of Chapter 850 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding city policy. And then, would you like me to go on to other business? Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> City offices will be closed on July 4th to observe Independence Day. Um, the referendum update, I sent everyone the email that I received from the Board of Elections. And um, it will be coming to council. But there were 179 valid signatures. He only needed to get 120. So tomorrow I will deliver. Um, Mr. <coughs> Jeffries sent me another letter that I'll take to the Board of Elections notifying them that it will go on the ballot for November. And then you guys will see legislation on that. That's about all I have mm -hmm. for that. The next one, Clerk of Council. Um, I met with Mayor Cook and Mr. Bridge last week and I informed them that I'm going to be resigning from my position. Um, in 2020, we started our own business and it's just really kind of taken off. And I just the time, like I'm being pulled in too many directions. I did agree to stay on as a backup clerk, um, but I also said by like basketball season so like november i so i gave like five months of time to interview somebody and if you find someone sooner obviously that will be wonderful fine <laughs> but i it, it wasn't like i'm saying this is it i'm done today so i was given some giving you guys some time to whatever you do place the legal ad and we're all place the legal ad for the speaking for the entire room we don't like that idea <laughs> I, I, I know, and maybe I'll come back and do it. Just my youngest is starting high school. He's super, um, very involved in sports and stuff. And I just see it becoming, I missed a lot during spring with track. And so 
I just know that's going to be the next four years, I'm trying to keep up with the business at the same time. And I'm going to say this, Emily, I hate to lose you, but I understand your thoughts. And when and at what date would you like your replacement in place? I, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I. I, mean, I want you guys to, I think the next person should come, I should sit with them for a, I agree. Mm -hmm. a, a, like at least two or three meet. I think two is not even enough. Like, Would you say 30 days is the latest? That would throw you into like August 1? Yeah, I, and I, even if you don't find someone, I'm okay. And so like by November for sure, like my hard date is November. Like I, get, I can do it through October. Um, but I think that whoever does like takes it over, I should probably sit a whole month because each meeting is kind of different. Um, well, there is a possibility you may have a previous clerk apply. Oh, that works out too. So, so they already have experience. I have talked with him, and I think we might have him apply. Um, would we be smart in putting this on Facebook that we are taking applications and or do we list this in the uh, newspaper? Um, do either. We can do both. I already got it circled clerk of council ad. So I was just kind of hearing you guys talk about when she wants to be out and done. Um, unprofessional just do it on Facebook. So it's a little more professional to do it on clerk. But this is also a job that technically don't need to be posted. So if you have someone who's willing to do it and who's qualified, I would say that that person would more likely end up getting a job to begin with. So it's not like it's a, you know, 40 hour week job with insurance. So that's also too, Senate Council can take into consideration as well. Well, I did we post it for you? What's that? Did we post it for you or did we just reach out to you? I feel like. I don't remember so long ago. I think it might've been posted. I had no idea. No, it wasn't. Lost. <laughs> it was not posted. It wasn't. We knew that she was interested at the time of the swap, and we reached out to her, and she accepted. Gotcha. So, yeah, it's really up to you guys how you want to do it. I'll help out, do whatever I can do, for sure. Any other comments on this? Who are you talking to, Mr. Collier? Okay. Uh, he hasn't given me a firm yes or no. He said he would be interested. Well, he definitely has experience. I mean, he was our he was our clerk for many many years. Right. And um, I forget now why he left. I think he took a job or something. He moved up to Northampton. Took a uh, job as a bus driver. Yeah. So, yeah. You guys want me to just put a small ad in the New Sun, like a line or two, just to be cover it or. I would say that, that wouldn't hurt. Yeah. Okay. It's a small ad. I'll run it for Mr. Graham. What do you think is appropriate? A week? Do you want to go into that uh, strategic session discussion? Oh, well, that's just for you. Wait. No, that's for you guys. I wanted to know what you guys' opinion of it are. I don't know if you guys want him to just read the final report. We have him come back. I think, I think there may have may not be bad to have him come back just to coach us through some of the comments and just so we're all on the same page um but ultimately it's up to you guys um my first thought would be wait until we get the report then consequently make a decision from that part mm -hmm. on um that possibly may be a topic for the 22nd uh, which way we want to go with that You'll probably have the report well before that, too, to be honest with well, you. Well, I would like to have the report, yeah. yes, before that. So we would have. You want a motion to. Add, I can add that also. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. I have a motion from Kathy. Okay. Second. Second. By Dale. Mm -hmm. To add the report from the. Yeah, the strategic session. Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Um, Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Councilwoman Wright. Yes. Mm -hmm. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Oh, yes. Did you say yes? Yeah, okay. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. <clears throat> yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. <clears throat> Pass the 7 0. Is there any other discussion that we yeah. need to bring forth at this point? About this or about something else? Go ahead. Um, the only thing I wanted to bring up was <clears throat> just a little incident that I had happen yesterday on our property. And that was my son's caught someone's drone over my house and over my backyard. And I thought maybe we should talk about whether we need an ordinance uh, restricting people's drone use over people's private property. 12 gauge well, take care of that. Well, isn't that a federal law? <laughs> There's Isn't nothing there in Ohio. You, I think. Well, federal, by all means, <laughs> 22 with a scope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, come, yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> come on! I have I ways of bringing those one. down, but I'm just saying <laughs> not everybody. Yeah, I thought. I thought. I thought. I don't. Don't you own so many feet above your house in mm -hmm. airspace? You own. Well, you this own was like yeah, 12 feet off the deck. So I mean, this yeah. was in my, oh, my backyard over yeah. my house. That's so so so. That would, I think, would lead to uh, stalking, harassment, uh, Boyer snooping, voyeurism. voyeurism. Oh, no, I, I mean, all kinds of huh? things yeah. was broken, I think. Could have been they, they can't fly them fly fly higher than uh, 500 well, yeah, feet. Right? That's the, well, we looked at the, all kinds of concerns around it. But. So maybe an ordinance might be in, in order for that. To, to restrict people flying over other people's properties. Can yeah. can I ask you guys to make a motion for me to look into that? Well, I'll make. Well, so moved. Wait a minute. Okay. Second. I've got another one. Motion second. To look, look into flying over drones over manager private property. And the attorney. Into well, I, look I, into I, the I laws. Can because I think you're going to get into some governmental regulations here. Can the motion just be for me to look into it, please? And I'll bring Jake into it naturally. You've got it. Um, the laws of flying a drone over private property? Is yeah. that well, general general oh. drone laws. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Something, whatever. If there is. Ordinance development. I don't. <clears throat> okay. I know they can't fly higher than 500 feet. According to the they're FFA, they're supposed to have a light. I mean, light yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have cameras on the outside of your house that b b captured this? Uh, I don't. Yeah. I do, but they don't point to the sky. Yeah, that's the. But if yeah. I find one over my property, I'll bring it to you. Yeah. So it might be in pieces, <laughs> but I'll bring it to you. General drone laws. <laughs> what else did you Ask say? Ask the mayor if that's okay. To look into general drone laws. And its impact on the city. <laughs> Yeah. More citizens' rights, possibly. Sorry. It's, uh, I, I get General it. General drone laws and citizens' rights. Okay. Let, let's, let me redefine the ordinance if you want to withdraw your second. Withdraw we'll second. Let's redefine the ordinance to check, see what laws are on the books in the state of Ohio what ordinances might be out there in other larger municipalities in regards to drones flying over personal property at, you know, if they're 12 foot off the ground, uh, that, that's just ridiculous. That, that breaks other laws in my mind. Uh, I know they can't fly higher than 500 feet because the uh, FFA would have a problem with that. And FAA. FAA, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought that didn't sound right when I said The future time. farmers don't really right, care. Right, future so farmers much, don't but. care. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah. is there anything else you want in that motion? So it's to check laws in the state of Ohio and other That's municipalities' weird. ordinances in regards to drones flying yeah, over private property. Yeah, right, drone. if there is any. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. I know there's the F, FAA put out a thing that they can't fly above 500 feet because now they're getting into air traffic, uh, airplane space, which I didn't think, I wouldn't want a plane fly, flying 500 feet above my house either. But 
some of the smaller ones is okay, but I don't want to object that close. Plus, yep. they are supposed to have a drone license. Yeah. To fly uh, yeah, I forgot about that. They're supposed to have a license to fly them. Oh. Over what, sir? I think, I think most of them, the battery weighs that much, I think, to operate them. I mean, I don't There's know. There's some little tiny ones like yeah, that. You can out. just up and... Most drones are going to be smaller than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Big into the bigger ones. The only drones I've ever seen had four propellers, and it was this square. Mm -hmm. I think it was this one. That, that with was, a camera that was on them. That one was, yeah. Oh, it was yeah, a, with the camera. Was, yeah. Do I have a second one, Ed? Second. Second, my friend. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. That's the seven zero. May I interject one thing on that situation? Would it be what advisable to contact uh, either University of Dayton or Wright State who has a drone program? Um, their their the professor would be familiar with all the laws. I'm sure we'll uncover all. Yeah, we'll take that consideration for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, it's more of a comment on Mrs. Zimmerman Janelle's uh, comment on the traffic lights in that meeting. I thought, and remember, the I thought it was going to be the north and southbound lanes that had the lights to go east and west is what I thought. So when I saw them, I thought, didn't they put that light in the wrong, wrong spot? Shouldn't it be around the corner a little bit? But again, if the traffic engineers thinks that's the best way to do it, then there's, I don't see a whole lot that we can do. But I, I think the the uh, the motion was made for the north to stop and turn north and southbound lanes, and you made the motion, I believe, Mr. Graham. Was it, one direction. So is that? Am, am I remembering that correctly? One direction at a time. Right, to where southbound would hold up and be able to turn eastbound with a green light to go either south. Or, yeah, northbound, I mean, would either be able to turn right, turn left, or go straight while the northbound lane was stopped for whatever seconds it was. I, it did that to me over the weekend. But it, coming north, there isn't, the light isn't there. It's on the westbound traffic on 571. I thought both of them was going to be on, on, uh, well, it's out there, 235. <laughs> but I'm sure you'll look into it, and that was just what I was remembering from it. So, you know, you'll let us know. And I'll find the thing and look at it, too. I'm sure. The only thing I'll add, I just remember, I mean, I think we've, we've got this covered. We're going to check into it and get back on it but I do remember you making the motion and you holding the diagram up saying I want the motion to be this right. and and so I remember that <clears throat> part of it but yeah but I think we're gonna look into it and we'll go. get an answer go ahead, Ken. different topic um, I would like to make a suggestion to move this table to the center so that podium could be turned facing you and that way our people will talk to you and I think that would be simpler and maybe start leading us in a better direction for the citizens to interact with us instead of Randy. The only problem I have, the traffic signals, I believe, are an operational matter of the city. Now, whether or not it comes back to uh, rest in council's mind, then I think we've got an interpretation of 
what was discussed here and what actually is. So I'm, I'm going to let that rest at the moment until we get some clarification. I have no problem on what you want to do with the table. I, if that's all right for the rest of the council. If everybody else likes it. Wouldn't that interfere with the audience? Well, if we have a, an aisle down the center, we just, you know, move them away and let people words, just walk down the aisle. You're splitting the chairs yeah, sure. and leaving an aisle down the center. Yeah, maybe that'll work. I don't know. We can try it. Well, Whatever you want. Sure. Go ahead, Janelle. Maybe you can just remind us to talk to you instead of him. Yes. No. It's just it, it, yeah. the way it's set up. And, it and just feels natural. Also, if, we, if, if when people come up, you just said, yeah. Please talk to us because I think sometimes mm -hmm. people just might not realize that. Well, I think there's a definite, definite, definite differentiation between powers. What I perceive as doing one thing, Mr. Bridge is doing things with the city and the standard operational facilities. I'm considering this position up here more of the legal and the laws of the city. The operation goes to him. But let's see <clears throat> where we come up with and then we'll go from there. Anything further? Move to adjourn. Second. Uh, Eggleston? Jamie? <clears throat> Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Jamie? And yes. Passes 7 -0.